channel. This video is all about food labels. I feel like there are so many labels out there nowadays that it can be really confusing. There's a lot of conflicting information and so in this video, I just wanna break it down, some of the uh, like biggest food labels that are out there, what they mean, and just kind of give you a summary of everything um, so that maybe the next time you're in the grocery store, you can uh, have a little bit more clarity. Now, if you're trying to eat as a whole foods, plant-based, vegan person, you're going to want to always stick to the perimeter of the shopping center. When you head to the grocery store, the safest place, the most healthy place to get your food is obviously in the produce section, especially if you're eating a whole foods, plant-based diet you're focusing mostly on the produce section. Anything on the interior of the store where there's boxed and packaged foods, you wanna use that sparingly. But these boxed and packaged foods actually take up the majority of the stores now. 70% of these packaged foods are laden with hidden sugars. Most are contaminated with pesticides and over 80% contain GMOs. So it's something that you should really be careful about when you are shopping. Now obviously if you don't have the funds to buy organic and you don't have the funds to get a higher quality thing, then you just do your best. I know for me switching over to a vegan diet, initially I did not buy organic because of the price. Now I buy organic because I've researched so much I can't not buy organic, um, but that's just me personally. Everybody start where you need to start and the wonderful thing is you're going to see changes in your diet and in your, uh, your attitude and in your weight, um, even if you just switch over to predominantly whole food, plant-based diet. So let's get into kind of decoding some of these labels. We're also going to get into the nutrition labels and what each of those things kind of mean. And I also just wanna point out the fact that a lot of marketing that goes into uh, the packaging that we see in the, in the grocery store every single day is, um, you know, the front looks great and wonderful. It's all natural. It's uh, whole ingredients. It's happy cows jumping in a leaping field when um, in actuality, those things are not anything that you can rely on. You can't rely on the front of a package. You always need to turn around, see what is actually in the ingredients. You need to see what is actually going on with the uh, macronutrients and the vitamins and the minerals. And the sad fact about some of those products that portray animals happy in a field um, and just leaping around um, and having a wonderful life is that some of those animals who are factory farmed will never see the sunlight and they will never feel a blade of grass on their little skin or feet or chew it in, in, in their lifetime. And that's really, really sad. So marketing can be a place where there's a lot of fallacy. Um, so let's dive into some of these labels. First up, let's talk about growing method labels. So USDA organic. Produce can be called organic if it is certified to have been grown in soil that has had no prohibited substances applied to it for three years prior to harvest. Prohibited substances include most synthetic fertilizers and pesticides. If a product is 100% organic, all ingredients must be certified organic and any processing aids must be organic. In addition to being USDA organic, you may see things like organ tilt, um, certified organic or QAI. These are just third party organic certifiers. You may see those on some products and you may see more of that if you're in a different country outside of the US. Genetically modified organisms or GMOs are in 80% of our food sources. If you can't find organic or you're not trying to spend organic prices, you can find things that are non-GMO project verified. This is a verification product that is North America's only third party verification for non-GMO foods and products. But just because it's non-GMO doesn't mean that it is organic or pesticide free. So keep that in mind when you are buying. A new label that I have just recently started seeing is the glyphosate residue free and glyphosate in transition. Um, glyphosates are the main ingredient in Monsanto's Roundup line of pesticides and these have been found to be uh, carcinogenic, they've been found to be hormone disrupting uh, agents. So these things are, are a good sign to me because I've not seen these, maybe you guys have seen them around uh, more. but. I, I love that um, companies or farmers or growers are starting to transition away from using glyphosates and um, at least you can tell in the packaging that it's heading the right direction. In addition to these big ones, there's so many more grower kind of certifications. There are labels that uh, tell you that they're protecting the bees or the rainforest or uh, fair trade workers. And there's even certifications that say that they are kind to animals, which I have a hard time believing, but if you eat meat and um, you know you want to try and find the cleanest source, maybe try and find those labels and as well as maybe grass fed or something like that. Then of course there is the vegan label, labels like gluten free, things like kosher if you keep the biblical dietary laws. And when things say healthy and natural, these are absolutely labels that can be on things, but they really don't mean anything at all. So my next point is coming to 
turning the box over or turning the product over and reading the nutrition labels. So when you read a nutrition label, here's what you will find. The first thing is the serving size and that is based on the amount of food that is meant to be eaten at one time. The thing about serving sizes for a particularly processed food, a lot of times the serving size is a lot smaller than what you can eat because those things are genetically modified. You can really shovel in a whole bag of chips or something like that and you've already had like 20 servings. So when you look at the serving size, if you are having something boxed, definitely keep that in mind because all the um, extra things below that, the carbs, the fat, the, the vitamins and minerals are only based on that serving size alone. The calories of course refer to total number of calories or energy supplied from that source and that includes things like fats and carbohydrates and sugars and alcohols. Total fat represents how many grams of fat are in one serving and because fat provides flavor and texture, these products are often loaded with sugar and sodium and other additives to create the illusion of fullness and the illusion of creaminess but really you're just eating like a ton of chemicals. Saturated fat of course tells how much saturated fat there is. Um, a diet high in saturated fat can actually increase your total cholesterol and introduce high levels of low density lipoproteins. LDL is considered the bad cholesterol and this is what can clog the arteries and lead to arthrosclerosis, a heart disease, lots of different heart disease from saturated fat. Sources of saturated fat include of course meat, um, poultry, cheese, butter, dairy products, baked goods, fried foods, coconut oil, palm oil, and chocolate are sources of plant-based uh, fats that are saturated. So. I personally try and stay away from those. Chocolate I do have sometimes, but coconut oil and palm oil, I, I try my best to stay away from those. Trans fats can naturally be found in animal proteins, but they can also be found in just all the processed food that is out there. In the manufacturing process, they add hydrogen uh, to vegetable oil, which converts the liquid into a solid fat at room temperature, and this process is called hydrogenation. So you're gonna see in your ingredient list a lot of hydrogenated things. That's what this means, and it's not healthy for you. Unsaturated fats are found in vegetables, nuts, seeds, and fish. They are separated into two categories, monounsaturated fats and polyunsaturated fats. Common sources of monounsaturated fats are avocado, peanut butter, nuts, plant-based oils. Interesting enough, if you don't know, cholesterol is only found in animal products. You cannot get added cholesterol through plant-based products, which is amazing. Um, our bodies produce cholesterol on their own, but a lot of the problem that people have with high cholesterol is strictly coming down to too much animal consumption. The words salt and sodium are often used interchangeably, but they are not actually the same thing. Sodium is a mineral and it's one of the chemicals found in salt. Um, and salt, also known as sodium chloride, is a crystal-like compound that is abundant in nature and is used to flavor and preserve food. Almost all foods contain some amount of naturally occurring sodium, but a lot of the packaged and processed foods contain a ton of sodium. The total number of carbohydrates is a combination of dietary fibers, sugars, and other carbs. Um, not all carbs are the same. Uh, you hear me talk about this many, many videos on my channel. Um, when people think of carbs, I feel like a lot of times they're thinking of french fries or cinnamon buns or um, just any kind of bready, sweety thing, but fruits are carbs, vegetables are carbs. So when you think about carbs, there's, there's a lot of carbs that are completely different and there's healthy carbs and not so healthy carbs. Dietary fiber is a type of carbohydrate and it's found in plant foods like fruits and vegetables, legumes, grain, and interesting, meat and dairy contain no dietary fiber at all. Fiber slows the digestion rate of carbs and other nutrients that can be absorbed into the bloodstream, which help control blood sugar levels. Less than 3% of Americans actually get enough fiber of the daily recommended amount of fiber. Insoluble fiber acts as a broom and cleans the digestive tract. The skin of fruit, um, nuts, seeds, um, wheat, these are all good plant-based sources of insoluble fiber. Another thing to note is that soluble and insoluble fiber is a great way to help your body stay full. So when I talk about eating uh, high volume foods, low calorie, um, in a lot of my other videos, these are foods that are full of fiber. Sugars are found in most foods and um, while naturally occurring sugars in fruits and vegetables are, are just a part of the deal, many manufacturers add added sugar to about 74% of the packaged goods that we have out there, even things that are considered healthy like granola or um, some kind of sports bar, yogurt, energy drinks, things like that have a lot of extra sugar. Protein provides calories or energy for the body. Protein is required for the building and maintaining of tissue. It's an important macronutrient, but we really do not need as much protein as uh, they say out there. Most Americans are overeating protein to the point of lifestyle disease, which is really scary. A lot of the food that we eat every single day, fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, legumes, 
All those things contain protein and it's enough protein to sustain and maintain and build tissue and um, you really don't need to overdo it on protein. That's why we see a lot of the disease that we see in our uh, culture today. As long as you're eating a variety of whole foods, um, you're getting enough of your nutrients, enough calories, you're gonna meet your protein intake. Vitamins and minerals are pretty self-explanatory. Um, different vitamins, A, E, C, are really great for antioxidant. You're gonna find a lot of those in your fruits. Um, minerals you're gonna find in a lot of leafy greens and vegetables, and if you have a wide variety of fruits and vegetables, you're going to get a lot of your vitamins and minerals just from that alone. Here we come to the ingredient list, and this shows each ingredient in a food by its common or usual name, descending order by weight. So the ingredient that is at the top is what the majority of the product that you're consuming is made of. And then it, by weight, it goes down and down and down, and the very last ingredient is the thing that it has the very least of. So if something is touting that it has a superfood in it, check where it is on the ingredient list. If it's not up there towards the top, then it really doesn't have that much of the superfood in it. And one more thing that I wanna mention as far as the ingredient list, there's a lot of sneaky animal products that can be an ingredient list that you may not know about. So some of the, the names for those are albumin, casein, caseinate, gelatin, ghee, L-cysteine, lactose, lactoalbumin, lard, shellac, sodium caseinate, and whey. So you may be thinking that you're heading towards a plant-based diet, but maybe check the ingredient list, see what, if you see any of these names, those are all animal derived. And you know, it's a process. You go step by step to try and get cleaner ingredients. And ideally, we wanna go completely whole foods if we can. Use those processed products less and less all the time. You're gonna feel better, you're gonna be healthier. So this is just a little overview for you guys of some food labels that are out there. I'm sure I missed some, um, but I hope this was helpful to you um, and a little bit informative. And the next time you head to the grocery store, you have a little bit more information in your tool belt to be able to pick some healthy foods. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you like my videos, please subscribe to my channel. I'm putting out new videos every Wednesday. And if you'd like to support my channel, if you find the information valuable, you can follow me on Patreon and add support there. Let me know what you guys wanna see next and I will see you in my next one. Bye.